All right, more dead bodies than in Afghanistan. That seems to be the watchword for our southern border. Last evening, we had Senator Joni Ernst talking about it was down there. This evening, we have Senator Ron Johnson, who also was just down there uh, from the great state of Wisconsin. Senator Johnson, Joni Ernst painted a rough picture of what's going on at the southern border. I know you were down there, too. Um, what do you make of this? You said uh, nothing humane about Biden border policy. I don't see how anybody could disagree with that. What in the world's going on? And what in the world do Biden's think's going on? Well, Larry, first of all, what's going on is a massive cover up by the mainstream media, first and foremost. So most Americans don't hear these things. But uh, when you go down there, I mean, just the numbers themselves 3.7 million encounters. We stopped calling them apprehensions because they're just getting very good at processing, dispersing. But 3.7 million apprehensions mm -hmm. since President Biden took office. That's uh, more than 6,000 people per day. On average, the last four months has been over 7,000 people per day. Uh, we were talking to local sheriffs, local landowners, uh, over 500 dead bodies found in the desert uh, last year. They're on pace to be over 700. And of course, you know that uh, one of the larger mass murders in America uh, occurred, didn't involve any guns. Uh, these were the 53 people that lost their lives, including three children, uh, trapped in that uh, semi truck trailer. You know, ma mass murdered by the human traffickers. Uh, we, we Went down the border. We got there around midnight. Uh, immediately encountered uh, a small group had little children in it: a six-year-old, a seven-year-old little girl, unaccompanied. All they had was uh, their birth certificate and a paper with a uh, phone number and an address. Mm. Uh, if they lose that, they're lost. Mm. Uh, we were also told by one of, one of Fox reporters that uh, earlier, you know, a few days, weeks, I can't remember the exact time frame, the similarly aged little girls. Or were being treated by CBP because they'd just been brutally raped. Uh, Kamala Harris knows this. She was on my committee. She heard testimony of children being sold for $84. How, how do you think young women pay off their five to eight thousand dollar human trafficking fee? They get in the sex trade. So the the human depredations. The you know we, we heard about uh, the rape tree, the the panty tree, the taunting tree. This is the tree where the human traffickers will sexually assault. Their victims, then they hang their panties on the tree to taunt law enforcement to say, "There's nothing you can do. We can operate with impunity." It's sick, and of course, the administration knows all this. Uh, it is their policy that is facilitating the multi-billion-dollar business model of some of the most evil people on the planet. But as I started out saying, the mainstream press is covering this up. If, if we're not for Fox News, a few other outlets, uh, we'd completely be in the dark. How can the Biden administration? actually from the president on down, keeps saying that the border is controlled. I mean, I hear Mayorkas, DHS Secretary Mayorkas, say this all the time. The border is controlled. The story that you're telling us and the story that Senator Ernst is telling us about how the cartels are running it and all the uh, deprivation and degradation going on is a completely different story. So how can they say that? How can they continue to say that? Because they're they're Democrats and they're they're backed up by the the, the media, um, but you know, they, they won't even admit it's a problem. Secretary Marcus in, in a committee hearing say, well, it's a challenge. Here's how they define it. It's it's how you all, all how you define control. They they define taking care of the problem is becoming more and more efficient at encountering, processing, and dispersing more people faster. Mm. Um, we were down there. Uh, about a year ago, they were they had a target of about eight hours from encounter to turned over to one of the non-governmental organizations like Catholic Charities. Eight hours. Mm. Uh, they're at least at that pace nowadays. So they're just getting more efficient at processing, dispersing, and they they view that as success. They view that as humane. There is nothing humane about the sex, sex trafficking, the deadly drugs, 107,000 overdoses last year. Nothing humane about their open border policy at all. If you take the Senate, sir, what kinds of reforms, you know, what would you want to do right off the top? I mean, this Title 42 business is still hanging over everybody. Um, you know, it could be applied to fentanyl. It doesn't have to be applied to COVID. But, you know, in a quick sense, what could you do to stop some of this deprivation uh, that you've seen, that Senator Ernst seen, and that the others saw when they were down there? It's, it's going to be difficult. At least we could hold hearings and we could try and publicize this so maybe there'd be more public outrage of what's happening you know right now democrats aren't holding hearings on this they're not going down the border president biden's not 
Vice President Harris isn't going to the border. So again, the, the news media can pretty well maintain a blackout on this. So it starts with the public being aware of this and then creating public pressure to do something about this. You know, but we've we've ceded so much authority to the executive branch. Uh, Congress, I think, partly to, to evade responsibility on the part of Congress. Mm. But the, the president's powerful, particularly when it comes to immigration. So it'll probably take uh, two elections before we can really gain control. And and we can gain control of the border. I mean, you know that. We, we had pretty well stopped the flow of unaccompanied children, families exploiting our asylum laws. Even, even single adults were way down toward the tail end of the, the Trump administration. But then we had the presidential debates, and every Democrat presidential candidate said they were going to stop deportations, offer free health care. Mm. And so single adults started coming back in the country. And then, of course, when President Biden took office, dismantled the return to Mexico, the other agreements. And now we have this massive problem. Again, over 7,000 people per day over the last four months. I mean, that's, that's a large caravan every day. It's, you remember that Del, Brio, Del Rio Bridge with 15,000 Haitians? Mm -hmm. That's only two days' worth. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, we're getting that every couple of days we have a, a disaster like the Del Rio Bridge, and it's just being covered up. Um, Senator, let me bring the conversation home for a moment or two. Um, back in 2017, you were the savior of small business. You got them a sizable tax deduction. They really hadn't been part of the corporate tax cut, at least not to the extent they should have been. Now, uh, in the latest go around, now Joe Manchin's come out against it, but they were going to slap a 3.8%, the so called investment tax, on all the uh, LLCs pass through small business. And then they were going to limit loan loss deductions, putting them at greater disadvantage. I'm sure you followed it because you were kind of the godfather of the small business uh, tax relief plan. What did you make of that? And is that dumb plan dead? Well, let's hope so. And it'd be really stupid. I mean, you are right. Uh, by the way, you helped me uh, back in 2017 as well. So I appreciate your your assist on that. Always. Um, people need to recognize, and I don't think a lot of members of Congress really differentiate the fact the difference between C Corps, which is about 5% of American businesses, and the pass through entities. These are subchapter S, LLCs, partnerships. Those are 95% of American businesses. Uh, th those are the, mall, the small mom and pop shops, but they can also be some pretty substantial businesses as well. They, they, they employ about 95% of American workforce. And so you, you can't allow them to become uncompetitive with the big guys, with the C Corps. Uh, we prevent that from happening uh, in the, the 2018 tax bill. Um, and we need to prevent them from becoming uncompetitive now. Because what would end up happening potentially is if you increase their taxes too much, uh, they'll convert to C Corp status and you won't get the revenue. They'll, they'll start paying the, the C Corp rate. Uh, but that's not good. It, the beauty about pass through entities is the, the income passes through to the owners. And there's a far more efficient allocation of capital to the, the economy. C Corps, because of double taxation, they just lock up those earnings. Mm. It distorts the M&A market. Um, there, there are a lot of bad things that occur because that the double taxation of dividends, we don't have that problem with the uh, pass through So we want to maintain as many businesses as pass through entities as possible, but they have to remain competitive. And they, they compete with tax uh, rates at the entity level. Uh, very few C Corps actually, that, that income is very rarely double taxed because mm. so much of it's going into nonprofits and pensions, that type of thing. So you've got to look at the entity level tax tax rate. And again, I, I don't think uh, Biden and Democrats understand that at all. Yeah, I don't think so either. You know, it'd be really cool when you take the Senate back, sir, take that top personal rate, which applies to the uh, LLCs and the pastors. I think it's 37 percent. Take it down to about 30 percent. Take it down to about 25 percent. Flat tax reform. Broaden the base. Simplify the code. Bring the rate down. That would be a bit. Republicans used to be in favor of that, taking that top rate down. We kind of lost track of that. I was just thinking, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm hallucinating. I understand it's a total dream. But you never know. The cavalry's coming. Well, you know, words matter. So what I've always talked about is tax simplification mm -hmm. and tax rationalization. Rather than reform, simplify and rationalize, and that guide our actions. Got a deal. Senator Johnson, you got a deal. I'm still with you. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming on. We appreciate it very, very much.